All right, let's go over automatic processing in radiologic technology. So automatic processing is a complex of systems, several subsystems. Uh, we have a transport system, a dryer system, replenishment system, circular, circulation, and temperature control systems, all within this automatic processor unit. So the transport system is the largest and most co complex system of the unit. It moves film through the developer, fixer, wash, and then the, to the dryer. It's made up of many moving parts, so it is most likely to break down. And this used to be the rad tech's job to get in there and try to figure out what was wrong. So uh, anymore, we have a third. If you if there is any film processing going on out there, that is left up to a third party that comes out and takes care of these things. So let's get back on track. Consists of three subsystems. We have a roller subsystem, a crossover network, or a transport rack subsystem, and then a drive subsystem. Looking at the transport system is the roller subsystem, has a roller subsystem. We have the entrance rollers found on the entrance rack, the transport rollers, which are the most numerous rollers within the unit, and then the master or the solar ro rollers, which are the largest at the end. Transport system has crossover networks and transport rack subsystem. The entrance rack from the feed tray to the developer, it uses guides to ensure the film is straight and has a short axis. There are deep racks, also known as vertical racks, within the processor. And this is a, it helps the film go through the developer and the fixer. And then there's a turnaround rack used to turn film at the bottom, top and, and the bottom, like the guides. The crossover racks must be cleaned before use daily, since they sit above the liquid levels and can get dirty. The transport system, or the drive systems, is a series of mechanical devices designed to turn the numerous rollers in the processor. There is one single motor doing all this. Usually 45 to 120, well basically two minutes to uh, develop your film. And it controls the time film is in the chemicals. Very important. So here we go. We can see uh, that we have the feed tray right here. We can see that we have uh, basically the developer. We have the fixer and then we have the wash. Nothing like a pitcher to explain it all. And then we have the drying chamber and then the receiving bin down here, the blower. You can see the blower to dry it. So um, these are these long vertical bins that we were talking about. And uh, this, is how, this is how it would happen. So the dryer system, which is the final stage, consists of two or three heating units uh, of between 1,500 and 2,500 watts. These use between 60 to 80% of all the electrical power in the processor because it's a heater. Uh, air is blown through these uh, series of air tubes to increase the velocity of air and the combination of high temperature and the high velocity helps dry the film. So the replenishment system, also known as the regeneration system, is used to replenish the developer and the fixer. The, uh, it re uh, replenishes the volume of fluid. Uh, Flood replace, uh, replenishment, timed or standby replenishment, and standby switch uh, all, all are used to replenish uh, the fixer and developer. It consists of pumps, storage tanks, and plastic tubing. Sometimes this uh, replenishment system is available in two options. A volume replenishment replenishes each time the film enters the processor, or a flood replenishment, which replenishment replenishments the pumps uh, Replenishment pumps are controlled by a timer. Both met uh, methods replenish more fixer than developer. The circulator, uh, circulation system, uh, also known as a recirculation or filtration system, that stabilizes the temperature, agitates the solution, mixes the chemistry, and filters the solution. It draws chemistry from the bottom and fills the top. The fixer uh, has a mesh screen, and the fixer is considered toxic with silver, and so you can't dump it down the drain. We used to have people come in and take the silver off our hands and go and sell it for money. So the temperature control uh, system regulates the solution temperature. The water controlled system uses temperature of the wash water and regulates the solution temperatures. The most common heat exchangers found out there are thermostatically controlled. This consists of heating coils that are thermostatically controlled and requires only cold water input into the processor. So the electrical system Distributes electrical power and monitors operation of the other systems. It usually consists of a solid-state microcompressor circuit. 
some models can actually perform many quality control functions. And these days, yes, they would probably have a little small computer in there letting you know what's going on. So types of automatic processors. We, there's a 7-minute, there's a 3-minute, a 90-second, which is the most common one, the 90-second, 60-second, 45-second, and a multi-speed transport system uh, that can be varied selected to different combinations of the above times there. So the processor size. We have a floor size, which is the largest size is used for high volume processing conditions, usually typically in your hospital situations. An intermittent size, which is in between size, often found in smaller clinics and physician offices, uh, let's say even like a, like a mammal, uh, mammal office. And table, well actually table counter, countertop size would probably be uh, what you would see in a smaller uh, clinic. For small, uh, this says small dark rooms and mobile trailers. So there's different places to locate this processor. It can completely be inside the dark room. Um, the bulk of it could be inside the dark room. The bulk of it can be outside of the dark room, uh, as long as the feed tray is in complete darkness. Or it can be totally outside of the dark room, which is most likely called your daylight systems. Very similar to what uh, the CR readers are today. So let's look at this processor quality control. Uh, daily it needs to have the clean, clean the crossover racks, check the developer temp, Check the water temp, check the replenishment rates, and sensitometry and densitometry needs to be done on the films that are processed. Uh, weekly, it needs to clean the entire rack assembly and processing tanks, a visual check of the belts, the pulleys, and the gears, and lubrication weekly or monthly. And again, this is something that's done by a third party. So here it is. That's a, that's a day. That's a, not a daylight processor, but that is your that is your processor, film processor. That uh, is again the feeding tray is inside the dark room, and this is on the outside of the dark room. So that covers it for automatic processing today.